great floor, isn't it? Okay, on this video, we'll uh, show you the in-depth sequence and process on how we rectified and did the epoxy coating for this warehouse extension. So as you can see, it's so nice. It's properly done. It's well done, but it doesn't mean that it was an uh, easy task. We have a lot of challenges for this. And again, we'll show you how we've done this. And especially for those of you guys watching who are also uh, planning or wanted to venture out into epoxy coatings, I'm sure this video is long, but it will have a lot of inputs for you guys on what to look for. And of course, for you to not to incur a lot of mistakes that are costly that uh, was experienced on this uh, warehouse. Not from us, we were the ones to rectify this, but the previous guys who worked on this one um, had a lot of, um, should I say, uh, failed checks that cost a lot you know, of drained revenue out of this epoxy polar coating. So as you can see again, they're so nice. Okay, number one, first factor you need to consider is substrate because basically this is where your epoxy sits into. So you need to check this if this is a sound substrate or not. So one way of checking a substrate, so as you can see this is all the concrete that we have removed and I'll show you a substrate that has failed, right? So if, you'd, if you have a pocket knife like this, okay, or you can use a nail, try to scratch it with a medium pressure and if you can see it scratch deep especially if you go like this and you see the aggregates coming out that will definitely tell you that this substrate is soft very soft and this is the example of a failed concrete substrate see the epoxy was sound but the substrate itself had failed Thus, no matter how thick your epoxy coating is, it will just peel off. So again, condition of the substrate. That's the first thing you need to check. If you see the substrate has a lot of cracks, it's powdery, a lot of pittings, then that's a sign for you guys to maybe just turn down with the project. And basically, just run away but be kind to your client just try to explain to them and don't just run and say no i don't want to do this you try to explain to them same as like what we've done here we've removed the topping and did the retopping again for the concrete making sure that it is leveled at the same time it has the right strength so watch this video when we inspected this area it was clear that in many places the epoxy had failed and it's you can see on this picture next it's powdery so when we did our initial scrape off it was very obvious that what caused this spill off was a weak substrate so if you can see here the concrete is sticking to the epoxy coating look how big that epoxy coating is and many areas it was flaking it was so soft you can disintegrate it with your bare hand in just slight pressure and no matter how thick the epoxy was being put into it was no match for a weak and failing substrate so with the grace of our client we have to remove that problematic and very weak substrate look how easily it was um, removed by our crew using a uh, bush hammer tool in some areas it was okay the substrate was fine it was of enough strength so we use our grinding machine and a PCD tool while the rest of our crew is removing and finding out the areas where a weak topping was being placed before by the previous uh, contractor so again we're using here our push hammer tool on this event here, our crew is making saw cuts 
on the entrance of the warehouse there are four of them so I'll be explaining later why we made this cuts here so we used a concrete saw cutter and this is the area here um, this is just one part just a fifth of that area so look at the debris and how much we have removed and we have not even have gone to the far end now what brother Bobbit here is doing is just he's making a uh, small square cuts and he's chiseling them off to make a uh, depression in which again I will explain to you later why and that's the whole area that we have to remove right so this is how it looks like after we remove them it's a demolition job this is the amount of concrete that we have removed a very weak substrate easily breaks off see so that's money being put to waste after a week of intense epoxy coating and substrate removal we have prepared the area getting ready for the next phase of our rectification which is to pour in a new concrete topping so this is how the area look like okay so we've installed the steel matting um, the eye for this is two inches square so at these areas here if you notice we put a bit of um, depression here um, because there's gonna be a slope that goes through here because we'll be putting a topping of about 2.5 inches which will be a bit higher from the old um, slab here so we're gonna be putting a ramp so the reason why we did a depression is that so that the ramp will have a proper anchor once it goes in tangent with the old slab and it will not easily break and crack so that's the reason why we have depression here on this area so again we'll be putting our slope because we'll have a elevation elevation change from this end to here so at this point our crew now is uh, putting in the bonding agent this is a combination of Echo Latex, that's uh, from our good friend Econtech, and a mixture of Portland cement. So this will ensure that our new um, concrete will bond to the old one and will not delaminate. Because most of the time, some others, they, uh, they don't put bonding agent. So that's the reason why the topping will delaminate, especially if the topping is very thin. So we need to put a bonding agent to ensure the new concrete will bond to the old concrete. So if you don't do this, we'll have a delamination problem. This is from one of our client site. So take notice of the crack lines. So obviously there's a delamination to where the crack lines are. So this is what happens for a topping without any bonding agent on and worse uh, without a steel matting on as well so it cracks and it delaminates as per a context recommendation a day after we have put in our bonding agent we've called in the ready mix and it's time for us to pump in a new topping so in here this is the uh, mixer and we'll be using the line pump to pump in our concrete to the site we're getting ready so here our crew now is preparing for the pumping proper and it's the concrete pouring time I'm with architect Landell and with my guy here Rosbear behind us here we start pouring in the concrete, so we've used a 3000 PSI um, design 
for 14 days uh, curing concrete. Let's go time lapse and have a look on how we are able to achieve a flat floor. So once the concrete is pumped, there's a team spreading out the concrete. And there's another team with a concrete vibrator. This makes the concrete bubble free and dense. There's one person who is uh, holding the leveling rod, which is in reference to a laser. And once he had that level in, there's a team of our crew with the screeder with reference to that uh, level who will be screeding out the concrete. So that's how a laser guided flatworks works. And we were able to pump and lay the new concrete topping for this whole area in just one setting. Timing is important in any flat wash job. So here we've used the power trouble to make the newly laid concrete flatter and denser. So we had two passes of the float pans and two passes of the blades. So that's the power trowel guys. That's how it works. And those are pictures with the guys in the power trowel. So there. Days after completing the flatworks, we've been frequenting the area, doing our independent checks to see how the concrete curing has progressed. This is the old coating. With no surface preparation. Coffee just easily got removed. Surface preparation is where you make a profile on your substrate and removing that uh, thin layer of weak latents on top of your concrete. So for us, we use our grinder since we are into concrete polishing but there's a lot of ways you can do surface preparation. At this point, we are doing the surface preparation grinding and also as you notice there's a lot of um, areas here that we have patched it's hairline crack um, it's not structural so if you find anything even a simple crack like this you have to patch these cracks so that your epoxy coating will not be absorbed onto these cracks right here because if you don't patch small cracks even if it's hairline it will telegraph to your coating and it will look like that the coating has a lot of crack marks so what we use to patch this small cracks is this one from Davis it's called Epo Patch it's a two-part mix and it is formulated for their epoxy as well because we're using Davis Power Floor Epoxy. Uh, this is intended so that that uh, primer will bond also to your Epo Patch. Once our Epo Patch has cured, we have grinded the second pass. It's crosswise and grinded through the cured Epo Patch. This will make sure that our uh, surface of our floor is seamless and no traces of the patch okay this is also one good tip that i will um, tell you see this saw cut here it's about three millimeter deep so we made this cut because as the new coating goes to this termination line right here it won't easily peel off so it will have like an anchor so once we have Foot traffic or the trolleys from this warehouse will pass through here. The determination of your coating will not easily peel off and break. So that's the reason why we put a cut on the termination end and also 
grind it a little bit so that it will go on the level into this old coating here so we'll not be putting coatings over this coating we'll be coating only until here so this will be our termination line for our new coating so that's part of our preparation so before starting the primer or any coatings job uh, you need to make sure that you have an area for mixing so this will be our mixing area right here so you can see our crew now is preparing the tools um, we have sets of they call it helix uh, um, mixing tool that we'll be putting on to our portable drill so this is our roller here this is our v-notch squeegee we also have buckets and as you can see here our wheels for our trolley we've cleaned them up as well so make sure it's dust free um, you will have a guy dedicated to be the ones mixing your epoxy one guy will be a runner there will be guys there putting the epoxy on and one guy there will be supervising and will be telling the crew whether or not it's time to mix another batch so we'll be mixing two batches at a time of uh, coatings and the primer so they're gonna be from that end all the way to here so yeah we'll be closing this um, roll up doors making sure that we don't have airflow that will cause uh, to lessen our uh, pot life of our coatings if you've noticed also um, it's we've done it at the night time because during the hot sunny day the pot life of your epoxy material will be lessened so you will risk you no, know, of um, having a hard epoxy it will be it will harden on you so yeah it's a good weather now it's the ambient air is fine it's workable so again our crew now is preparing all the materials so that's one thing you need to prepare first before you start any coatings make sure all your tools are there so you won't have to find which particular tool and equipment and where you will find them also spike shoes so this is important as well um, if you buy spike shoes on online so you buy the spike shoes with an inch long spikes don't buy the ones with two inches because it's very hard for you guys to walk onto and you might end up tripping so we've already had an experience with that so we recommend a one inch high spikes for your spike shoes so XC here, uh, what he's doing is uh, taking out the lens of our rollers. So as you can see here, he has put masking tapes and roll out. Uh, this will help us also to have a lint-free operation. So that makes all the residual lint out of your rollers. So you won't be able to have a lot of lint when you start priming or coating. Okay, so just as I am cleaning our notch squeegee here, uh, you can see this surface is very smooth, right? So this is what will happen to your coatings if you put it directly into a smooth surface. So this one here is a residue from our last um, project, epoxy coating project. So it's easily peeled off, see? right there so that's the reason why we grind and make a profile onto the substrate so that it won't easily peel off see easily peels off so this is a demonstration of why you should put grind and profile your concrete before you 
install your epoxy so we're getting ready for tonight's main battle all right so right now we're getting ready so this is what we've prepared for so we are getting ready to put in our primer so you can see it's already very clean the area has already been moved out that blower is going to be out as, as well in any moment now um, one thing also is you need to make sure that your concrete or your substrate is moisture free so what we've done here since our moisture tester is still yet to arrive so yesterday we've put a like like this one so it's a clear plastic and we taped it here so basically if there's any trapped moisture inside um, you will see that this one is as moist if the concrete has moisture itself so it's been almost a day now and we don't see any moisture here so that's a good sign and also this too right here because uh, three days ago it was raining and in this particular area here we have water leak so we've put a, a moisture catchment like this so you can you can basically do this if you don't have a moisture meter but if you have a moisture meter that is highly recommended it's good as well but this one is a proven and tested way of um, telling if your substrate has moisture so again there's no moisture uh, it doesn't have any sweat marks at all so that means our concrete is now ready for the epoxy coating so what our crew now is doing is uh, we're putting in the tape to where our termination will be so this is where our epoxy ends over here and we've checked also that our patch has gone through the small cracks that we've seen days earlier so we need to make sure again that this area is, is clear and everything is clean so the crew had just finished um, vacuum the floor and for us to make sure that it's free of any dust and anything impurities so we'll be using denatured alcohol using a dust mop uh, I will show you later uh, this one gives us a peace of mind that uh, our surface is really really clean and it adheres to our concrete all right so denatured alcohol so why do we use denatured alcohol um, for me and for us, it's better to spend a little more and have a peace of mind that uh, you have a sound addition of your coating. Otherwise, you know, if we risk ourselves of not spending time and effort and of course money to put denatured alcohol, mop this one hole out, um, it's a matter of, you know, spending a little more so that you will end up with a happy and returning client so that's for us um, it may not work well with everybody but that's just us we are making it all sure that we don't come back here again and client will be unhappy so we want to have a happy client that calls us and say hey thanks and we'll have another project again for you guys so that's basically it Ha, dito mo, one able to win. 
kung naanay something ito sa ako at madjuwel na tanan kami po tulit so mag agad yung madjuwel diri ah para sikuran ito sa tanan ba <laughs> okay so we're now cleaning the surface our final preparation before we put on the primer so this is denatured alcohol this ensures the impurities are removed Right, but Kevin now is agitating the primer base and but Jerome here is getting ready for the catalyst so after this guys complete with the alcohol clean up then we're gonna start the primer so again this is the mixing crew and we will have a runner for our crew will be on the roller and Brad Joel here will be our supervising guy making sure that we don't get hardened epoxy on this job so this is the first batch of epoxy primer so our crew now is getting ready see like legions Show your spear! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right! Okay, so proper timing is essential, guys. Take your time to mix your hardener and your base. So it will dry up. If you don't mix it well, if you don't take the time, you will end up with coatings that doesn't dry up for forever so you'll have to remove it but don't over mix because it will also create heat on your epoxy material so just about two minutes is okay more than that if you mix it for like 10 minutes then you'll end up heating up the material so brother Ryan here is our runner Huh? Korean. Korean. <laughs> right, so they're getting ready. So So Brad Joel here is our coating supervisor. And these are our legions. So this is the application of our primer. So guys, this is what a good concrete will react to your primer. So it's not quickly absorbed. It doesn't mean that it doesn't penetrate. As you can see here with XC. So you will have also some dedicated guys to do the edges. In this particular here brother Limwell is our guy doing the edges using baby rollers those areas that are hard to reach from our nine inch rollers so if you notice all our crew are wearing respirators because primers are very pungent so it has a very hard smell especially this is a solvent based epoxy so you need to have respirators on guys you need to have respirators on okay very important 
Okay, so Brad Joel now is uh, signaling our guys to do the mixing and our runner is there to get the next batch. So that's the reason why we have a dedicated supervisor, coating supervisor to foresee the coatings operation. So you need again a supervisor your uh, coatings crew your runner and your mixing crew and of course your mixing area Okay, so next batch. Go, Brad. Okay, so our crew is done with the coating, I mean the primer. So whatever rollers you use for this, we don't reuse. So we'll throw them out. So don't reuse any rollers on every step. Use a new one. So that's how you get a quality result. Close everything and wait for the primer to get tacky. Right, so more than two hours has passed. So me and uh, our supervisor here, Brad Joel, will be inspecting if our primer is getting tacky. And that's the time we're gonna be putting our first coating. So we'll best We'll just be going in, uh, but we need to have a respirator on. Okay, so our um, primer now is tacky. So the crew now is uh, getting ready for the first coating of epoxy. So one of the tools that I forgot to mention, I forgot to show earlier, uh, this is one of the secrets to eliminate bubbles in your coating is what we call a spike roller. So you need to have this um, roller to pop out the bubbles. So once we start mixing the epoxy, you'll get some bubbles due to the aeration from your agitation so again spike rollers eliminates those bubbles so here's the crew now getting ready taking their pose so once you open the kit it's the best practice to agitate the base first like what but Jerome is doing so this ensures that the epoxy compound inside this kit or a can or a pail they'll be agitated and getting ready for the mix by agitating the base you are assured that you have uniform color throughout your coating when using the rollers Make your stroke in a one straight line and moving to the next and not on a zigzag pattern. Okay, straight back row. And most importantly, you back row.
one person is doing the edges. One guy is doing the notch squeegee. And the rest will just go with the roller. Bike roller. Right, as you can see, XC here is doing the spike rolling, and if you can see, if you can watch his step, he doesn't drag his foot. So that's one of the things you need to consider because if you drag your foot on a spike roller, you will eventually see a lot of scratches from your coating. So that's not what you like. So. Don't drag your foot while you step on the coatings, guys. Okay, very important for a coating contractor is to have something like this. It's called a wet film thickness gauge. We got this from Elite Creek USA. So we are also an affiliate with them. Um, thank you very much, Eric Quick. Uh, we'll try to check the wet film thickness of our coating. So you just dip it like that. And see which one it falls into. So it's like, how much is this? So we're having a wet film thickness of about 300 microns, not bad for the first coating guys. So we're trying to achieve here around a millimeter of coating. So again, this is the first coat, of course the primer uh, still will absorb your coatings and the second coat will eventually put a body on your epoxy coating again this is called a wet film thickness gauge so Davis on their end have their epoxies in a hundred percent solid so basically the wet film thickness once it dries you still have the thickness that you've got from your wet film thickness if you have a 60% solid epoxy so basically once it dries you are just gonna have a 60% dry film thickness from what you got from your wet film thickness gauge. Okay, there's one thing I need to show you. As you can see, Ryan now is bringing in the new batch. So he has the back bucket on all right as you can see Ryan now is pouring the epoxy right he is estimating to cover the areas of which this bucket is intended for and I want you to notice how he empties the bucket see he doesn't put the bucket into the floor and we're in an upside down position so if you put that bucket in an upside position just to empty the bucket you will eventually have an immortalized lip of that bucket as it telegraphs to your coating so don't 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 put 
the bucket upside down just to empty the contents inside the epoxy so pour it but don't put it upside down guys that's one tip okay this may be unorthodox but yeah um, that's what I've said we've waited for our primer to get tacky alright it's tacky but it's not sticky okay um, the reason why we don't wait for it to dry and straight away put our first coat while our primer is still tacky is that we need to ensure that our primer and our coating is homogeneous as it dries um, again this is unorthodox some others would you know they would not agree but for us it worked for us it makes a very good bond to your primer your first coat and your primer bonds homogeneously if your primer is still tacky with the labor time if you can imagine this is a 500 square meter area and if you can just do the primer and the first coat in just one night why not so that's the second reason but the first reason is for us to have a homogeneous primer and first coat so again that's us others would not agree but it worked well for us Good job, birthday boy. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. All right. So day number two. So this is the first coat. It's normal for you guys to see some bubbles like this because it's still the first coat. So if you see any bubbles during your first coat, don't worry about it. Um, what we're planning to do now is to sand this one again um, with our machine so it's not gonna be super abrasive we're just gonna level out some of the bubbles see small bubbles here so it will be flat when we do the second coat so what we found also here is that there was water coming out from there even though it didn't rain that much and see so that's the nemesis of any coatings may it be epoxy like this or polyurethane so water damages the coatings while it is still at its curing stage so we will put some maybe buckets there so as we won't have this problems during our second coat so we'll be sanding this one putting some patch before we do the second coat so we're we are rigging up now for our machine put sanding pads and then sand this whole area just to make sure that all the bubbles you know um, and poke marks are scraped off leveled and some other um, cracks here that uh, the first coating will do some patching so again that's normal don't worry about it it's doable it's nothing major so you need to do this before you apply your second coat so that it will be seamless it will be perfect and you can turn it over to your client
as we are sending the rest of the crew is also doing their checks to see if there are any nicks pinholes and small crack marks that needed repatching so this is part of the preparation for the second coat Okay, so just so we can spice things up a little bit, <laughs> John and I decided to give Architect Landrel a sort of a heart attack by telling him that our epoxy didn't dry. <laughs> so he said he's coming this way to check out the area because we told him, John told, told Architect Landrel that uh, it's the entire area that didn't dry up. And Everything was messed. Yeah. Everything was messed up, and uh, it's like toothpaste. So <laughs> we'll see when he comes. <laughs> Hi, I get the I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so we apply alcohol again to clean our area. Preparation for our second coat. Okay, so we've completed sanding the first coat. So for an untrained person, it may seem to look like we have messed up all the area. So as you can see, it's already scraped off. But this is again part of the preparation. So it removes all the um, unevenness of your floor, um, significant high spots, and it will also um, show up the low spots for you to do any patching that you need to do before the second and final coat. So our crew now is getting ready. Uh, they're mopping the area with the tinctured alcohol just to make sure again that the, uh, the impurities of this flooring is gone before we apply the final coat. So what we've used for sanding is that we put a 4 inch sanding pad, it's 100 grit, uh, to our grinding machine. So this will make um, scratches, not so abrasive and it will also level out some imperfections on your floor so basically we're getting ready for the second coat and we'll see how it goes just like on the first coating we're using our v-notch squeegee make sure that the thickness of our coating is uniform and this also helps spread out the material for the guys on the roller For large areas like this, it's best practice to pour the epoxy from the bucket directly to the floor. As the longer your epoxy stays on that bucket, it eats up and it lessens your pot life, risking you of epoxy material quickly curing up inside the bucket. And we're almost done. We're up to the far end now. Oops. 0.7. 700 microns. Okay, kayo. This is the second coat. 
so it's still wet but it's better than the first coat isn't it okay second coating complete and that's it Nanook took me sa inyuha. Pating ninduta sa inyuhang flooring na green. Wow. Do the honors. Sir Matt. Okay lah, okay lah. Mula kami makin ini lama, because our our shoes are muddy. Wow. Walai ribbon, sir. Walai ribbon cutting. We've completed this project a week ahead of schedule. It may look like the floor is uneven, warped, and wavy, but don't be confused because that's just the reflection of the roof. And the light if you notice the reflection from the people around and all those in the columns is pretty straight so we have accomplished a straight floor and a level of epoxy coating pretty solid epoxy you can feel it by just knocking it with your knuckles so this is how flat and straight the floor is when we turn off the sloping lights at the end of the day there's nothing more rewarding than to see the client smile knowing that you have delivered the quality that they are expecting from you right so another pro tip if you notice we have put in markers on both ends so we specifically put these markers so that we'll know in every batch a particular area of coverage that will ensure that we won't run out of epoxy material and that the thickness of our epoxy is just about 1 mm as we planned so all the epoxy materials here are being used and it's just the right amount because we've put these markers on we've done the calculations and this have been our reference of the coverage of each batch so that's another pro tip so you calculate your whole area if you have an area like this that this is square that's perfect Put on your markers. Miss Horaba, Hora! 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 Hora!